Good morning everyone. Today we're going to tackle about Module 7, Science 7, Quarter 2, Part 2 about biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem. This is Sir Topper, your Science 7 teacher. Before we proceed, let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord God in heaven, thank you for the new day you bestowed upon us. Until this moment, we still have our borrowed life and strength from you. We worship and praise your holy name. This moment, we'll continue to study and acquire new knowledge. May you bless your students with witty brain to think fast and in inquiring mind to be curious on whatever knowledge they will learn today. Most importantly, bless them with your wisdom and a heart that will follow your commandments in order for them to become worthy in their studies. You know that in these recent times, most are suffering from hardships and economic crisis. We humbly ask you to bless the parents of your students. May you shower your abundant blessings and prosperity to each of their homes, so that we can use this not only for our daily lives, but especially for the performance of our duties to your holy name. We hope that we heard, that you heard our prayer. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. For today, we're going to have the second part of Module 7, Quarter 2, Science 7, entitled Lesson 2. The difference between biotic and abiotic components of ecosystem. Last time with lesson one, we discussed all about the meaning and importance of biotic and abiotic. But this time, let us see the difference between them. Before we proceed, let us have this quiz review. What I know. So, directions. Read each item carefully. Write only the letter of the correct answer for each question and key in your answer in our class point up with the class code of 95858. Ready? Let's have number one. A plant needs water, radiant energy, minerals, oxygen, and carbon dioxide in order to live. How are these requirements needed by plants categorized? Go. Okay, time is up, and the correct answer is letter A, that is abiotic. Number two, which of the following represents an abiotic component of the environment? Go. Very good, and that is correct. It is letter A, flowing lava. Number three. Which of the following are needed in setting up an aquarium as a mini ecosystem? Go. Very well said. That is letter D. Communities of different species of organisms, water, soil, and sunlight. Number four. Which of the following characteristics regarding biotic factors is true? Go. Very good. Letter C. It grows, reproduces, and dies. Number 5. Which of the following organisms are biotic factors capable of making their own food? Go. Time is up. And the correct answer is letter C. Mahogany. And this is a kind of tree. Number 6. There are physical and chemical substances in the ecosystem. Which of the following refers to the non-living things found in it? Go. Very well said, and that was correct. It's letter A, abiotic. Number seven question. How will you describe biotic factors? Go. Go. Well, then that is correct. It's letter A, living things in an environment. Number eight, question. Which of the following choices 
illustrates purely abiotic factors, inhabit ecosystem, and sustain the needs of other living things. Go. Mm -hmm. And that was correct. It's letter C. Sunlight, soil, temperature, and oxygen. Number 9. Your aquarium contains greater number of fish and few hydrilla plants. You feed the fish regularly, but after a few days, you noticed that an increased number of fish died. Which of the following most likely caused this? Go. Very good, and that is correct. Letter D. Shortage of oxygen as life support for the fish to live. And last, for number 10, the distribution of the different types of organisms in an ecosystem is affected by environmental changes. Verify which of these factors inside the box likely affect the distribution of oxygen. Is it 1, the amount of sunlight, 2, amount of precipitation, or 3, availability of nutrients from soil, or 4, number of different kinds of plants, and go. Time is up, and you are correct. It's letter D. All of the above. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Congratulations for those who got it right. Let's proceed. What's in? Earth is a distinct place where humans and other living organisms survived due to the diversity and interactions with varied life forms. Okay? Humans interact with plants and animals, everything that is living organisms. Knowing the differences among the components of the ecosystem will help us determine what we contribute to sustain its stability, manage and control limiting factors, and mitigate adverse impacts of imbalances in the environment. Let's go! Before we proceed with the main lesson, let's have this. Activity. Identify the following as biotic component or a biotic component. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Okay? And there is a guide questions below. Okay, thing, air. Is it biotic or abiotic? Let's see. It's abiotic. Very good. It's non-living thing. Birds. Very good. It is biotic. Living thing. Earthworm. Very good. Also, it's biotic. Fire. Mm -hmm. You're correct. It is abiotic. Grass. There's life. Okay. It is biotic. Heat. Non-living things. It is abiotic. Lightning. It's non-living thing. It's abiotic. Rocks. Non-living thing. It's abiotic. Soil. Non-living thing, abiotic, and also water, non-living thing. So we have this. How do biotic factors differ from biotic factors in terms of a function, function rather, or influence in an ecosystem? So here is the answer. Abiotic factors refer to a non-living thing factors such as water and air that support life. To all living things, whereas biotic factors are living things such as plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and etc. that depend their lives on non-living things. Again, we need to interact with each other. A biotic and biotic must interact in order for their survival. Okay, let's move on. So, we have what's new? Activity 1, life within a small world, okay? So, you're given the procedures here. You're asked to look at the picture carefully on the picture 1 or figure 1. Identify the components that make up the ecosystem inside the jar. And decide whether each thing inside the jar is living or non-living. Let's see. Describe how each thing or condition 
influences one another. Make and complete similar table below on a separate sheet of paper. So, let's look at the figure. Uh, it's an aquarium. It's a little aquarium in a jar. Okay? Let's see. Let's have the answer. So, thing or condition. So, there is a fish there and a snail. Plant water. What would be their function? Function of environment. Produce oxygen, produce carbon dioxide, and habitat for aquatic organisms. So, where fish or snail function on environment as produce carbon dioxide. And that was correct. Is it biotic or abiotic? It is biotic. There is life. So, there is the so-called living thing. Plant produces oxygen. So, it is a living thing. Biotic. Water. It is a habitat. It's a place or area for an organism to live in. So, habitat for aquatic organisms. So, that is non-living thing. So, it is categorized as abiotic. So, let's have this answer. Do you think life is possible within the jar? Explain your answer. Yes, because living organisms like fish can breathe due to the presence of plants that provides oxygen and availability of water that serves its habitat. Or you may have your own answer. Number two, what might happen to the fish if plants are not present and why? The fish will easily die because no oxygen will support life. Again, you may have your own answer. For number three, if the animals are not around, what might happen to the plants? Why do you think so? Plants will easily die because no carbon dioxide will be used in making their food. And again, you may have your own answer. And for the last question, are there factors outside the aquarium that influence the growth of an organism inside it? Cite at least one, if any. Yes, such as the sunlight and temperature from surroundings. Again, you may have your own answer. Okay, let's proceed. Let's have the discussion proper. What is it? A biotic component refers to all the living organisms in habitat. This includes organisms such as human, animal, plants, bacteria, and decomposers. For human beings, they are one of the biotic components of the ecosystem and they depend from plants for food because they are not capable of producing own. And animals and human beings are alike in many ways. Uh, they are also biotic components that compose the ecosystem and help sustain the needs of other living organisms. Animals get food from the ecosystem such as plants, insects, and mammals alike as well as the other forms of prey. Plants and grasses are also part of biotic components of an ecosystem. They provide food and other important elements like oxygen to humans and animals. They also become source of shelter and other materials in the ecosystem. Bacteria and decomposers are also biotic components that help break down the remains of other living organisms by converting them into nutrients found in soil. So that will be the fertilizer and so on. How about abiotic? A biotic component of an ecosystem refers to its non-living or physical environment. The physical environment is influenced by different factors such as water, sunlight, oxygen, temperature, soil, air, minerals, and nutrients. Let's talk about this one by one. Water. Water is one of the most important abiotic factors that carry life to all living things. It covers the largest part of the world such as the ocean, rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water which are considered the habitats of marine organisms. It is component that completes are complete uh, the process of food making in plants which is known as photosynthesis. Number two, sunlight. Sunlight is another necessary abiotic factor in an ecosystem. It plays a vital or important role in photosynthesis in order for the plants to sustain the production 
of food for other living organisms. Without this factor, few organisms will be able to survive. Let's have number three, oxygen. Oxygen is also an abiotic factor produced by plants that support breathing among humans and animals. It helps decompose decaying matters around us. So, oxygen is very important. The fourth is temperature. Temperature is a measure of the degree of hotness or coldness. It affects the kind of living organisms that can survive in a certain place. About soil. Soil is an abiotic factor where the plants grow and live. It contains rock, fragments, and nutrients coming from the remains of decaying bodies. It is also a home for different microorganisms and living organisms like plants. Third, rather, the next one, minerals, nutrients. Minerals, nutrients are other essential substances from the soil needed by plants and animals for their growth. Air in the atmosphere is comprised of gases needed for the growth and development of our organisms. An example of this is the carbon dioxide, which is needed by plants for food production, and the oxygen, which is a gas needed by humans and animals for respiration. Okay? Let's have this activity number two. What's more? Find me. So you're given the directions below is a word puzzle containing biotic and abiotic factors. Identify these factors from the word puzzle. Copy the identified factors from the puzzle on a separate sheet of paper and match it with the descriptions that follow. Okay, without further ado, let's see. Okay, these are the questions. Number one. It is vital for the survival of all, of all organisms. The amount of this in the environment is influenced by the amount of rainfall. It serves as the habitat of aquatic organisms. And what is that? That is water. Very good. The biotic factor which determines the kind of living organisms that can survive in a certain place. It may promote growth and development among organisms in the area. What is this? It's temperature. Number three, the biotic factor comprised of different gases released from plants and animals needed for the growth and development of organisms. Number three is air. Number four, the abiotic factor produced by plants that is important to respiration of humans and other animals. That is oxygen. Very good. Very well said. Number five, it is an abiotic factor where the plants absorb nutrients and water in order to grow. Very good. That is soil. Number six, it is a very important component in the photosynthetic activity in plants to support life with other biotic components. It comes from the sun. Very good, sunlight. Seven, it is a component of an ecosystem that depends from plants for food because they are not capable of producing their own, and that is human or animal. Very good. Number eight. The biotic factor decomposes dead bodies in order to increase nutrients of soil. What is that? Bacteria are decomposers. Very good. Number nine. This biotic factor provides food and oxygen to all living organisms. Very well said. That is plants. Or they are plants. Number 10, these are biotic factors such as vitamins and proteins in the soil needed for plant growth. Very good. And that is minerals. Let's see the summarized form or summary. Okay, so that's it. Let's move on. What I have learned. Directions, 
differentiate biotic from abiotic components of an ecosystem in terms of meaning, factors, and functions. Use the Venn diagram as shown to the right, place the similarities at the center, and the differences at opposite circles of the diagram. Let's see. Let's have our answer. Okay. So for the left and the right, that will be the differences and the common component is at the center. The common between them is components of ecosystem that support life. Remember, biotic and abiotic supports life. For biotic, it refers to all living things. Abiotic, it refers to all non-living factors. Example for biotic, human being, animals, plants, bacteria, decomposer, or insects. For abiotic, we have water, air, sunlight, temperature, soil, nutrients. Okay? Number one question, what is the difference between biotic and abiotic components? So that is the meaning or the answer above given in the Venn diagram. Number two, do you think both biotic and abiotic components are important to the ecosystem? Support your answer. Yes, because biotic components get their source of food and energy from abiotic components in order to survive. Otherwise, some abiotic components were produced and managed by biotic components to continue the cycle of life. That's it. So let's move on. What? can I do? Directions. Study the given illustrations below. Construct a poem or poem of at least two tercets or three lines stanzas to show your understanding of the illustration that follows. So this will serve as your assignment for this module part two of module seven. Okay, plant, sun, human means title, it's up to you. So here are the the rubric or here is a rubric with different criterions. We have the title, we have the sequence, content, creativity. Focus on the high score, which is 5, in order to get the highest grade. Okay, let's move on. So let's have the assessment for Module 7, Science 7, Quarter 2, Part 2. Okay. Directions, read each item carefully, write only the letter of the correct answer for each question, and key in your answer in our class point up with class code 95858. Are you ready? Okay. Plant needs water, radiant energy, minerals, oxygen, and carbon dioxide to live. How are these requirements needed by plants categorized? Very good. That is letter D, abiotic components. Number two, which of the following represents an abiotic component of the environment? Correct. That is A, flowing lava. Which of the following are needed in setting up an aquarium as a mini ecosystem? Very good. Letter D. Communities of different species of organisms, water, sand, and soil, and sunlight. Number four. Which abiotic factors would varieties of fish and seaweeds rely for their survival? Okay. That is water and temperature. Letter C. Number five. Which of the following is abiotic factor produced by plants? That is correct. Oxygen, letter C. Which ecosystems below would you find the highest rate of photosynthesis? Correct. Forest surrounded by tall trees, ferns, shrubs, and animals. That is letter C. Number seven. The distribution of different types of organisms in an ecosystem is affected by environmental changes. Verify which of these factors is more likely to affect the distribution of oxygen. Is it the amount of sunlight, amount of precipitation, am availability of numbers of, from soil, rather, and the number of different kinds of plants? Okay, it is D, all of them, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
One of the following statement describes biotic factors in the ecosystem correctly. Which one is it? Correct. Letter C. Plants, animals, fungi, and bacteria in an environment. Number 9. An aquarium contains fish, snail, and hydrilla plants. The organisms mentioned belong to which of the following? Correct. It is A. Biotic factors. Your aquarium contains greater number of fish and few hydrilla plants. You feed the fish regularly, but after a few days, you notice that an increased number of fish died. Which of the following most likely caused this? Correct. Letter D. Shortage of oxygen as life support for the fish to live. Very good. 11. Which of the following statements is true? 1. Anim all animals and bacteria in the environment are biotic components. 2. All living things and non-living things in the environment are biotic components. Very good. Only 1. It's letter A. Which of the following abiotic factors are found in the atmosphere? Very good. It is the oxygen and carbon dioxide. Letter D. Our cells need this kind of abiotic factor in order to survive. Which of the following factors may cause death when it is absent for an hour? Very good. Letter C. Oxygen. 14. Ecosystem like forest is comprised of several biotic and abiotic components. What components can be found in the forest? 1. Bird and snake. 2. Algae and mushroom. 3. Waterfalls and rocks. And 4. Monkey and wild pig. Very good. All of the above. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Letter D. Let's have the last one. Which of the following statements below regarding abiotic factors are true? 1. Abiotic components include plants, decomposers, air, sunlight, and water. 2. Abiotic components comprise things such as temperature, rocks, soil, and minerals. And 3. Abiotic factors such as sunlight and water sustain life for living organisms in our environment. Okay, time is up. So letter D is the correct answer. Only 2 and 3. Okay? So, let's have these additional activities you are given. Um, try to perform the activity below to give you more ideas on how the organisms interact with each another. In order to live, write your answer in a separate sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm going to give you this as your assignment number two. Okay, so here are the guide questions. One, two, three, and the rubric for explanation okay so there is an answer here for additional activities what happened to the snail and fish in each set after two or three days in set a both fish and snail are still alive in set b both the fish and snail will die okay for question two in which set up was the fish still alive after two or three days why is this so? In setup A, where it contained plants that provides oxygen to support life. Again, you may have your own, uh, your own answer. Number three, what do you think will happen to the snail and fish in each of the setup when left closed for a longer period of time? The fish and snail will die easily in setup B because no presence of plants. In setup A, the fish and snail will stay living because of the presence of plants that provides oxygen within but will die soon if it is left closed for a longer period of time. Again, you may have your own answer. Okay, if there is no question, thank you. This is Sir Topper, your Science 7 teacher. Good day, everyone.